That's right, my friends. I needed daily bread. Yes. So, Kate Wood is a self-taught baker, writer, and photographer behind the award-winning blog Wood and Spoon. She's the author of this book I have in my hands. Her daily bread inspired words and recipes to feast on all year long. Kate, welcome to the show. How are you doing this morning? Thank you. Or this I afternoon? Am doing so good. It's afternoon where I am, but I'm doing great. We've got I've got a house full of kids, but I think that I've got them occupied enough to where we won't have any we won't have any mid show appearances. So we've had a busy and fun day. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's yeah. great to hear. Where are you located? I'm in Selma, Alabama. Um, I like to tell everybody I'm from LA, which is Lower Alabama, but we're like right down towards the south of Alabama and a uh, really small town that's just so fun and um, lots of good community here. Awesome. Love it. Alabama. Never been, never been, but um, yeah, I'm kind of close to LA too, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I'm here in Orange yeah. County. Yeah. Where's those? Yeah. We're, it's basically the same thing. <laughs> basically the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, you need to make your way over here. The South is nice. You'd like it. Oh, oh, okay. That's an invitation. So is yes, that? I have a family of five, though. Hey, so me too. Me too. That's great. You're in good company. We like lots awesome. of kids around here. Okay. Yeah. Love the southern hospitality. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. They'll roll the roll, the red carpet out for you here for sure. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you so much, Kate. It's uh, <laughs> exciting to have you on the show. Welcome. This is Christian Podcast, and we talk about you no. Know, Issues of culture, the Bible, Christianity, and what I'm doing lately, I call this season two, because now I'm focusing on, we are, we bring God thinkers to the show, and then we explore going all the way from blasphemous to divine. Okay, so we're going to try to explore this towards the end of the show, and I don't know how it's going to play out, but it's always fun, but basically the idea is... You have a book right here in my hands that I mentioned, Hair Daily Bread. I was, you know, like scrolling through and it's so good. I want to start it in the new year because I think yeah. that's a purpose, oh, right? I hope you will. <laughs> I hope you will. I know. I think it was a misstep naming it Her Daily Bread because I've gotten so much great feedback from the male population too. I'm like, maybe it should just be their daily bread. I don't know. <laughs> Our daily bread. Um, I, I think, think so. There's something in there for everybody, even the guys. Yeah, no, it's so good. I love it. I mean, this is this is totally like I was reading some of the the stories in the book and I could relate so much to them that I'm like, this is amazing. Like I I want to go through it. I want to take my family to oh, it. I'm touched. And I think it's a solid, you know, for some of the people that are cuz I know the internet, the internet is it's crazy. There's all kinds of there's everything, right? And when it comes to Christianity, <laughs> there's also all kinds of views and things. And yeah, yeah. my friends, this is a solid book, okay? Like, oh, if you, you take a look at it, it's you're going to be blessed. You're going to, hopefully, you know the intention. I think it's getting close to the Lord. But, Kate, uh, tell me a little yeah. bit about why did you write this book, like, first of all? Yeah, so, well, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but I'm a mom of three got three little kids all under seven and the past few years of our life has just been full in the very best sense, but also in, you know, the sense that we're just kind of like drowning in stuff. There's just so much to do and, um, life is busy. And I found myself really in a place where I wasn't connecting with the Lord. And so part of that, you know, was my responsibility. Like I just wasn't taking the time to do that. Um, and I found myself really leaning on some devotional books um, in order to like 
find that reconnection and they would have scriptures throughout and, and it just fed me in a way that, you know, I needed relationship, um, not just with other people and myself, but also time spent with the Lord. And so, um, you know, I found that to be such a helpful tool in my own personal life that I decided I wanted to integrate that into what I do. So, um, for the past few years, I've been writing on a baking blog called the wooden spoon and, um, and food is such a big part of my life. I decided, you know, why not? why not incorporate that into the devotional? And so her daily bread was born. It, um, you know, there's scads of recipes throughout, but also I'm hoping people read it and feel like they're just talking with a friend. Um, I hope it's just relational and encouraging, um, but also just points you to dig deeper in your own personal life with God and the Bible and all that good stuff. So that's kind of the background. It's, it's, it's so much more than that. It was a lot of work in the very best sense, but that's, that's at the, at the root of it. Mm, that's so good. And it is, I mean, I, I, I was saying this in another episode, I tend to judge a book by its cover and <laughs> this book is Me too. I hear it's you. beautiful. I mean, the, 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 the hard cover, the color, the texture of it just feels like super nice to have in your hands. And then one of my favorite things, I'm just going to say it right here, it's the coffee cup. Yes. The little yes. picture of the coffee cup. I love coffee, yeah. so you got me with that. I'm like, okay, sure. I need oh, this. thank you. <laughs> well, I, uh, I love to have my quiet time in the morning. Like, hopefully, I try to get up a, like a little bit before the kids do and just have that like few moments of quiet. And so for me, I felt like a devotional kind of went hand in hand with that cup of coffee because I... I usually don't have a cup of coffee in my hand and not the Bible or a screaming child. It's one of the two. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's usually we're either trying to survive the morning or we're trying to thrive in the morning. So it's one of the two. Wow. That's good. And I love that you yeah. mentioned thrive or survive. That's one of my, I don't know if you know this band, but they're called Switchfoot and they have a song, Yeah. right? They have a song that says, I want to thrive and not just survive. And yeah. as you were talking before about, um, You know, like this season in our lives where it seems like, where can I find like the, the depth that I'm looking for? And there are seasons, even right now, you know, as we're recording, the Christmas is just around the corner. Um, where now you can listen to this episode whenever. But it's a season where usually people are, are sped up, right? They are on the microwave oven. Um, speed, yeah. right? Trying to get things done, trying to get the Christmas presents. or, And I think in a sense, life is like that all the time, right? And yeah. where, uh, as I hear kind of like your story and your heart, and I was reading you know, through some of the pages on the book, um, some of the stories, I'm super curious to know like what brought you, like what's your, a little bit of your spiritual journey to come yeah. to faith or to come to say, I need a daily bread. And I mean, yeah. for that daily bread to be the word of God, right? But how did you end up in that in that position? Like, what's your your faith journey? Yeah, well, I didn't grow up in a um, like a traditional Christian household. My mom kind of had some of that background growing up, um, but it wasn't really a part of our lives until uh, about like seventh grade. And the public school system was kind of iffy where I was, and so I got sent to a private Christian school. And truly, like that was one of the first times I was ever exposed to anything, um, you know, outside of like the super hallmark Americanized version of Christianity. You know what I mean? So um, I think between seventh and eighth grade, I probably walked the altar. I did the altar call probably like eight or nine times because I really didn't understand. I think I came to face, I came to understand that maybe I was missing something in my life and, But I didn't have, there still wasn't that like deep relationship. Um, and so I would say like from that point on, I, I started kind of learning more about who God was. And it really wasn't until probably like the few years after college that I really developed a personal relationship with Jesus, like a really personal one. Um, a lot of it before that was just about works and maybe like um, getting myself on better terms with God. And after college, it... I think um, I just got to know who he was as a friend and it was really good. And, um, and since then, you know, we, um, during that time I was involved in a great church that just like grew my understanding of him and, and um, of God's word and like what he has for us. And um, I met my husband and we got married and we joined just 
the most ragtag church here in Selma, Alabama. It's not fancy. It's literally called blue jean because like they just want people to come as you are, like whatever you've got on your back, like just show up. And truly, I mean, it's been within the past 10 years that me and Jesus have become friends and it's really cool. So, um, you know, I'd like to think that, you know, those childhood years, at least high school and college, you know, kind of, I was getting to know who God was. Like I got to learn about him and those years after college, I got to know him. Like I really got to meet him and we developed like a deep personal relationship that, you know, we're still working on today. So I don't know, man, Jesus is my friend. I'm so excited. He's, he's fun to talk about with my kids. Like every night we pray and my, uh, the other night, probably a couple weeks ago, my son, he's, um, he's five and he was like, God, thanks for being our friend. And I was like, yeah, buddy. I'm like, you got it. Like he is our friend and he's always <laughs> there so for good. us to talk to. That was cool. So tr- my journey's not, it's like not the traditional trajectory because definitely my parents were involved, but it wasn't until a little bit later. And, um, yeah, it's just, you know, everybody's journey's personal. And that's, that's kind of my story. Mm-hmm. Oh, great story. And yeah. I, I mean, yeah, that's wonderful. I'm thinking right now, as you're talking about, you know, kind of like your upbringing and stuff, I want to tell tell you a little bit about um, my story growing up. So I'm from Guadalajara, yeah. Mexico, and uh-huh. um, it's kind of like central Mexico and to the west. I, I don't know, the most popular town close to it, it's uh, Puerto Vallarta. A lot of people know uh-huh. it. Um, yeah. But anyways, Guadalajara is the second largest city. I grew up there for like 24 years of my life. And when I was a teen, I remember visiting my my aunt all the time, you know, to her house uh, just to play with my cousins and whatnot. But I remember she had on her table, I mean, she was she was just amazing at cooking, right, and making, preparing meals for everybody. Um, mm-hmm. But I remember at some point, you know, like she had a more like an emphasis on following Jesus type of thing where... Mm-hmm. I remember she had these this, uh, pieces of paper on the table that said something like daily bread or, or I don't remember what it was yes! called, right? Yes! And you would you would pick like one and then it would be like almost like a random Bible verse. And then yeah. you, know, you kind of had to chew on it and like, oh, this is what maybe God is trying to speak to me right now. Uh-huh. So I, I mean, right now, as you were talking, it just brought me back like those really good memories. And yes, that's awesome. When when... I mean, somewhere in the book at the beginning, I think you said you want this book to feel like a friendship, like you're t- like you're walking with a friend, right? And yeah. it brought me back to those moments where I felt like, wow, when I was with my aunt, it really felt like a family connection and also oh. like a spiritual journey. So I guess one of the questions I have for you in your experience as a blogger and as a baker, um, mm-hmm. what's the role of food for because you say in the book like what do you mean when you say like food is a uniting thing yeah so i wasn't born in the south i like there's this saying that you i've I've seen everywhere it says i wasn't born in the south but i got here as fast as i could um and it's and it's just it's just a way of saying like i love it here i didn't grow up here but like i love it and one of the things i love about the south is the southern hospitality Um, Mm. there is not a single event that does not happen almost distinctly around a table because food is so embedded and interwoven in the culture here. It's, I mean, the roots run deep and, um, and it's just a way to love people. Like whether it's over a meal or bringing something to a friend that needs a buddy or like, you know, me and my kids this morning, they're out of school. We were decorating cookies. Like it's a connecting thing. Um, and so that's my personal experience. Like I've engaged with food and people in all these unique ways over the past few years, but your story is entirely different. You know, you have probably those meals that you grew up eating that just take you back to your aunt's table or to siblings or friend or reminds you of this distinct experience that you've had. And we all have that. So we all speak in this universal language of food because it's, It is, it's woven a part of our lives and our cultures, but our own dialects, like our own stories are like our own specific dialects to tell. Like there are our own personal things to share. And when we welcome people to our table 
or into our kitchen or to our homes to like share a cup of coffee or to have a meal or a glass of wine or something like it's a connecting thing. It's, it's like you're, you're opening your story to somebody else and welcoming them to participate in it because there's community that happens around the table. And so, you know, I'm just so passionate about, about welcoming people into your home and like loving them via food. Like it's not as hard as we make it out to be sometimes because Mm. like, we're not going to be best friends with everybody in the whole world. Like we're not going to, we're not going to make that personal connection, but we can at least say like, I love you and honor you. Like here's a meal, like here's a plate of food, whatever. And I think that's a, like a unique opportunity that a lot of people don't necessarily participate in because they're nervous about what they have to offer in the kitchen. And I am so gung ho about like people getting in their homes and, and just welcoming others, whatever that looks like. It doesn't have to be perfect or Martha Stewart. It's just gotta be authentic and full of love. And I think everybody has that to give. Oof. Wow. That is so good. And Ah, I mean, authentic. You said so much in there. Uh, and Sorry, by the way, I, know, I was rambling. I started no, running that It's, out. it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. You were so good. And this is what I do all the time because, <laughs> um, you know, my, my brain is everywhere here because I edit this as we talk. Um, uh-huh. So I have okay. different angles and buttons to push on. But then oh, okay. I re listen to the episodes and I found like nuggets of truth. That we're saying, I'm like, oh, I didn't pick this up at the first time. I didn't pick this up, you know, when I first heard it. Um, and right now, I feel like that just happened to me. You know, like you said so Aww. much there that it's so <laughs> profound. But that's amazing because it's also an invitation for, for people to like listen to this episode more than once and also share it with friends and family. Um, oh, good. But there's so glad. um. What I, what brings to me right now the the this idea of the table and of hospitality and of welcoming and of authenticity that you were um, talking about is I can't help but think of Jesus doing that for us again and again in Scripture, right? When I yeah. there's even a passage where I'm I'm not super familiar with like specific like oh this is in you know Matthew three or whatever yeah no me but neither. <laughs> But there's one where uh, it's after the resurrection and Jesus appears to the disciples and they're, they're fishing. And they, it, it's interesting because once Jesus reappears, like they don't recognize him right away, right? Versus yeah. before you could tell, okay, there's Jesus. And then after the resurrection, I don't know if uh, it's just a mystery, right? I don't know if he was disfigured yeah. in oh, a yeah. sense or, or whatever, but they don't recognize him and he's on the shore and it says that he's preparing breakfast for them. Mm-hmm. And they don't recognize until they get there. And they're, oh, this is Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. And there's something about the meal. And there's something even about, I was thinking about, um, like, God's, you know, you know the book, The Five Love Languages? Yes. Yeah. Right? I feel like there should be, like, a special edition of the... For food. <laughs> the food language, right? <laughs> Oh, for sure. Absolutely. We should write that. We should write that. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I think well, it's... Should... trademark it. We're going to do it. The five love languages of food. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I love it. Throw the ideas out there. Um, uh, so... That's uh, funny. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think I, I love all over the New Testament. Mm. It's There's just so many instances of, of Jesus meeting with people, you know, whether he's welcoming... He's like, hey, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to eat at your house today. Or, you know, like him him turning water into wine at a wedding. I mean, Mm -hmm. who cared if there was like good wine at the wedding? Jesus did. He was like, yes, I'm like, I'm I'm here to like, you know, solve these problems for you and show myself to be who I am. But also like, I'm going to do that via food. And you right down to the Last Supper, like welcoming even somebody that was going to betray him at his table. I mean, that's beautiful that's because that's us like that's that's our story like us as the betrayers and he's still welcomed and fed and and offered himself for us and that's just it's beautiful there's a lot of beautiful analogies in the bible revolving around food Mm -hmm. yeah there are so many and ah so there's one and specifically that's coming right now to my mind that i wanted to talk about because i feel like your invitation to hospitality. And again, I mean, there's so much I want to say at the same time, but I'm going to go one by one. Uh, 
So in some of the stories in the book, you're talking about the Enneagram. And I love how <laughs> you, you turn it from, hey, I love the Enneagram. It's, it's so helpful. Uh, but almost like to this point of like, you got to be careful not to just live out your life defined by a number, right? Or defined mm -hmm. by somebody else's identity upon you. And okay, if you're a, and almost use that as, as an excuse to whatever type of behavior, right? Or, I mean, you call it sin sure. right there in that part yeah. of the book. Uh, and I can't help but think of even this invitation of Jesus to the table. I was reading again, I don't remember exactly where, but it's in the Gospels, where Jesus is sitting with the Pharisees, right? Mm -hmm. Face to face with the Pharisees. And, and then he almost like goes off, like telling them what's wrong with them, right? But I love the fact that he sat at the table to be able to tell them their truth in their face. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about this this uh, relationship of inviting people to the table, even people like wh what's your experience with encountering disagreements at the table? Yeah, well, you're you're catching us a couple days before Christmas and a lot of people all across the United States and beyond are going to be engaging with family and friends. And that's not always like, it's not always like a Hallmark movie. Sometimes it's really messy. Like, I don't know about you, but I've got some, and sometimes that character is me, but I've got some characters that just know how to push your buttons, especially like around Christmas and the holidays. Like, it's just that time of year when you're supposed to be with friends and family. And let's be honest, that's just not, it's just not, it's not clean. It's really messy a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And so I think part of, I think part of what our call as leaders is, is to extend grace and love to those people, even when they're not making your life tons easier, even when they're causing disruption in your household, even when it'd be a lot easier just to shove them at the kid's table and, and pretend they didn't exist. I mean, we have an invitation to love and engage with people in a way that like Jesus loved and engaged with us versus you know, what their personality or behavior is, is making you want to behave, you know? And so I do, I think that it's hard to, um, you know, it's, it's a thing I'm still learning how to do. I'm not good at it. I would tell you like with full disclosure that like dinner time at my house is insanity. It is wild <laughs> and chaotic all the time because it's me and my husband and three little kids And, you know, if one of us is in a bad mood, nobody's having fun. I mean, like, it's just crazy. And so, like, I, you know, always envision the table as being this place where, like, we connect and love one another. And sometimes that's really easier said than done. And so I think it's just, you know, dusting yourself off and, and getting back in there and, and trying again. You know, like we had a messy Christmas last year and we're coming into Christmas this week. And I'm like, okay, we're gearing up. Like, I know there's going to be some harried moments, but like, Lord, like, how can I honor you by loving the people in my home and just submitting that time to him? It's a, it's like a practice. It's not, it's just, not, <laughs> that's not something that like I have mastered. I'm still figuring that all out and still working it out, you know, better on some days than others, but it's definitely still in process. And we all are. I don't think anyone's figured it out. Mm. Yeah, no, that's so true. I didn't think we have figured it out. Um, other than you know, following Jesus' example and probably, um, yeah, trust in him, right? That he, I mean, he set a way for us to invite everyone to the table. He didn't say, you know, that the table is going to be, uh, it's going to go smooth or not, but the table is the place where we can have this even hard conversations, I would say. And what a better way to have it than with food, yeah. right? Um, yeah, I so, totally agree. I want to tell you a little bit of now what's kind of like in the in the background of my story right now happening because I want to share with you my favorite recipe. Yay! Oh, I okay. love that's awesome. And then I'm yeah, going to tell okay. you a story that just happened last night as we we're watching okay. Christmas movies, okay? Oh, good. Okay. So, here we go. My favorite recipe is um Veggie sticks, okay? <laughs> you put them in a bowl, 
And uh-huh. then you have like this huge bottle of salsa valentina. I don't know if you know which oh, one that is. What salsa is that? No, it's just hot is- sauce from Mexico called Valentina. Okay. It's okay. from my state, Jalisco, but they sell it. I mean, they sell it here in Southern California for sure. So I don't know if, yeah. made, if it has made its way to Alabama, but uh, maybe at some point it will. Or maybe it's there in some you know, Hispanic markets, maybe. So I put Probably, yeah. lots of it on top, uh-huh. mix them up, and then lime. Okay, and that's that's a recipe just for a movie night snack. That is so right. funny. I did not think you were going to go veggie straw route. Like, uh, if you had given me 100 guesses, I wouldn't have put veggie straws on that. <laughs> what were you thinking? But you know what? I'm not going to lie. I've got veggie straws in my pantry right now. My kids love veggie <laughs> straws. And I love salsa. So this can be like the perfect marriage of the two. Okay. So it is. And here, here's the thing. So... Last night, we are uh, watching a movie, so we want to watch a Christmas movie every night before Christmas, right? And Mm -hmm. uh, so we're watching a movie, and then my son, the oldest, he's 12, he gets Mm -hmm. up and he's like, do you all want veggie sticks with (laughs) Valentina salsa and lime? I'm like, yeah, score, you know, (laughs) like he's thinking of everybody, and he goes and makes it for everybody. But here's the thing, it's gonna, I mean... Here's where it gets it gets funny. But he brings the bowl and I'm like, oh, so good. You know, we're watching this movie. I start biting on these things, the veggie sticks, and they don't taste like nothing. No flavor. Nothing at all. What happened? What happened? <laughs> so I had COVID. I had COVID last no. week. Yes. Um, so I had COVID last week on oh. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So yeah, on Friday I got tested. I'm like, oh, it's COVID, right? So luckily, you know, I, I don't know if the vaccine really helped or what, but I feel pretty good, you know, but... Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. So I have, I, I mean, the weekend was pretty bad, you know, like ups and downs and then headaches and... No body aches and whatnot. Right now, I'm feeling super good. I still feel like, no, a little dizzy, but I feel super good, you know? And, but I I didn't even know. I I mean, I knew that, you know, sometimes you lose your taste when you have COVID, but I was Uh a little or super skeptical about it until I Uh was like trying to eat these veggie sticks. I'm like, these things taste like nothing. So, (laughs) is your taste back? Has it come back yet? Um, I don't know. I haven't tried since. No, I think it's a little bit back because I had a banana and I could taste uh-huh. the banana. Yeah. But it was oh, it was completely gone. I'm like, wow, these veggie sticks taste like nothing. And all I could feel is I, I could feel like the the spiciness in my face, <laughs> but no flavor. But no flavor. Oh, that would be bizarre. That would be so weird. Oh, I'm glad you're feeling better. That's the pits. Yeah, it was so bizarre. But um, yeah, thank you. And so all of that to say is I can help but compare this to and now for this one, I made sure I have the actual Bible verse right here. So Matthew 513 says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. So, I mean, immediately as I'm eating these veggie sticks, I thought, this this is exactly what Jesus meant, right? Maybe, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying COVID came here yeah. just to, for, for us to make us realize that Jesus' words are true. But it did for me. And I'm like, what is food if it doesn't have flavor? Right? I mean, he's talking about salt, but it's really food. Like, what is food if it doesn't have flavor? It's it's worthless, right? It's just you feel something in your mouth. Um so right. What um you talk about nourishment and the people that have gone before us, like we are here because of all the people that have gone before us. What's your, tell me a little bit about that journey in your life to get to where you are at now. You know, what were some of the, some of the hardships, some of the places where maybe people nourished you, where people 
came alongside and you know you got to understand maybe a a newer side of the kingdom of God like tell me some of the even even as people read the book and you know find the stories what are some of the harder stories that they're going to encounter when they read her daily bread yeah well you know when i was writing the acknowledgments for the book um at the end of the book i i think i did it over the course of a couple of days but i remember just like weeping at my computer because you nobody achieves something like this like nobody achieves something like this like, like for me is a dream like on their own like you just don't do it on your own yes. there are always people that are opening doors and encouraging and coming alongside of you and building you up and my life has just been overwhelmed with those kind of people like i have so many people in my corner and it is it is the most heart-filling thing that i have ever experienced like I have my, my, you know, my mother, who's one of my best friends. And, um, but besides her, like I have just, just scores of women who have treated me like a daughter of their own, who have just mothered me in their own unique way. They're not related to me at all, but just have loved me and nurtured me and just fed into my life and fed my heart in like these ways that have had like longstanding impact. And it's just beautiful. Like when you encounter somebody's love, completely unattached from obligation. You know, they're looking for nothing in return. They just want to love you. Like it really, really does something. And the awesome thing is like, we all have that capacity. Like we all have that to give mm. and your unwarranted love shared with somebody for no reason other than you just are there to love them. It, 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 it has eternal impact. And that's my story. I've had so many people that have just loved me and, Um, you know, I've led a really, I would say privileged life. I haven't been through a ton of hardship. I have stuff that's broken my heart. I, I've met heartbreak, but really I've, I've been protected from a lot of, you know, the stories that a lot of people probably get on here and share right now. Um, but I count that as, I count that as just a, a huge blessing that I owe to so many people that came before me and did the hard work for me. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. And so, um, you know, this, this idea of like being nourished by relationships, you know, they're just being vessels of God's love. Like they're really, that's, that's who you can be to your kids and your wife and whoever else. Like that's who I have the opportunity to be in my own home and, and outward to. Um, but they're, they were just being vessels of love and it impacted my life. It had significant impact And I think people will see that as they read through the book, because it's not just one person stepping up to the plate for me every time. I think one of the special things that I got to experience while writing this book is, is God really pinpointed just tons of stories, 365 days worth where somebody's love, whether it was forgiveness for something that I did, mm -hmm. whether it was, um, you know, someone, you know, stepping in to teach me, something, you know, walk alongside me as I was going through something difficult. Like there was just tons of people doing that. And, um, it had, it had a big impact on my life. And so I think you'll see a lot of that in the book as you go through it, just because, I mean, there wasn't one giant pivotal moment. It was just, I mean, 34 years with worth of people just nurturing and loving in special ways, whether they knew they were being used by God or not, that's what they were. That's what he was doing. He was using them to, you know, produce something just so incredibly heart filling and special for me. Mm. Wow. Well, first of all, congratulations um, on this achievement. I think, I mean, Thank it's you. beautiful. And the stories, I mean, like I was saying, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to like going one by one. And, but the stories, you know, from, from some of the just randomly you know choosing pages and exploring i'm like wow this is profound you know and it has oh, that depth you. of of the you no know, it just brought me back to my aunt's house and the daily bread you know the picking out this these yeah. bible stories that i feel like it does nourish something uh deeper in you and it, it, it it's that connection right with with our lord with our maker mm -hmm. right that goes yeah. beyond Uh, well, it's so 
connected to how we are related to those here on earth, right? To our fellow brothers, sisters, moms, daughters, uh, kids. Um, somebody was telling me the other day, I think in the last episode, that um, relationships is the essence of life, right? Like, re Or yeah. relationships is the essence of the kingdom. And mm -hmm. what better way to bring about relationships that food so even with my you know my covid story right now i think uh like some of my friends have been saying hey can i drop some food off at your house you know for you and your your family yes. i'm like yeah and what a tangible way to showcase love to somebody else right a meal like yes. prepare food together so as we i mean Just for fun, what are some of your, when we talk about food and I share my own you know, favorite recipe for a <laughs> uh, for, uh, snack, for movie time, when it comes to food, what are some of your favorite uh, recipes or your favorite meals? What are some of the favorite maybe meals that people will find yeah. here from you? Uh, well, I always love that question. You know, like, what's your last meal? Like if you had to pick one last meal on earth, mm. what would it be? And the answer to that question is my mom's baked spaghetti because, and it's nothing fancy. It's literally like jarred marinara, marinara sauce and ground beef. I mean, it's literally nothing special, but like it could, it brings me back to her kitchen and it feels so good to eat it. Like when she's made it for me, but in this book, That recipe is not in there because truly it's like two ingredients. But in this book, one of the recipes I love um, is, this, is the cinnamon bread. And that's probably, it's maybe the hardest recipe in the book. So I, I don't know. It's kind of challenging. But the reason that I love it is um, all of my kids went through phases where their favorite breakfast in the morning was the cinnamon toast. And I would make them, I would make these loaves of bread and pop them in the freezer. And we just plow through them week after week. We cut slices, slather them with butter and, I mean, it was, it's, it's like dessert for breakfast, but they just loved it. And it felt so good to make something that my kids just like delighted it. I mean, they just loved it. They loved it. Like I love creating something that is special and meaningful to them. And even now, like, even if I just get a piece of like grocery store bread, they're like, mom, will you put cinnamon sugar on it? Like that cinnamon and bread thing for them is It's, I think it's going to be one of those things that they look back and they're like, oh. And the other one I would say is the buttermilk biscuits. Um, again, that's that's another thing that's related to my kids. We have like a freezer stash full of biscuits basically at all times because you can pop them in the toaster oven and like serve them to the side for dinner or we put, them, put butter and whatever on them for breakfast. Like it's like the food that my whole family will rally around and everybody loves it and it's like, right there. And I, again, I think it's one of those things my kids are going to look back and remember like, Oh, mom always had biscuits in her freezer. Mm -hmm. And I live for that kind of stuff. Like I love, I just want them to have all of those memories. Like I'm, I know I can't manufacture those for them, but I know that they're going to exist for them. And it, I get so excited by, by the possibility of it because I know how special those have been in my own life. And I just, I'm like, Oh, I want them to have that. I want them to be like these you know, old men and women that just look back and can remember these special things that ways that their mom attempted to love them in their own home via food. And, and so whether that's, you know, veggie sticks or biscuits or whatever, like we all have those things that we're doing for the people in our lives that they're going to look back and remember. And so I love those two recipes. Those are delicious. And if you get ambitious in the kitchen, you should definitely try this in the bread because it's delightful. Mmm, cinnamon bread. <laughs> Sounds so good. Oh, so good. I love it. I love it. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do now, Kate. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you an emoji reaction. I'm gonna offer it to you here in cyberspace for okay. the book Her Daily Bread. Uh -huh. All right. So here we're gonna see we're gonna see what it is. So it could be it goes from blasphemous to divine, right? So Just bear with me, and we're going to figure okay. out which one it is. Okay. It's a divine emoji. Divine emoji reaction. <laughs> 
Um, how do you feel with the divine emoji? Oh, I feel great about it. The divine emoji almost looks like they've got tears welled up in their eyes. I'm a yes. happy tears. <laughs> yeah. happy tears? They're happy tears. Yeah, it's divine. Yay! It's like the highest of that's highest. Awesome. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. That makes me feel so good. Thank you. Awesome. And this is what, we, what I want to do for the end of the episode, Kate. I want you to explain to me from the worst idea to the best idea. So from the most blasphemous idea about food and God, what would it be? And then we're going to go all the way to divine. So if you can think of like the worst thing when it comes to God and food, what would it be? What would be the most blasphemous one? Oh, well, okay. What popped in my mind immediately was the fruit in the garden. Oh. They weren't supposed to touch it and they went for it. But if we're going, that was the first thing that popped in my mind. I would say like a food principle that people like go for today that I would call blasphemous is like, like uh, artificial butter. Ooh. Don't do that. <laughs> Just go for the real butter. Yes. <laughs> just use the real butter. Use just a little bit of it if you got to cut back, but don't do artificial butter. Nobody wants that. Okay. Artificial butter is blasphemous. Yes. Okay. Love it. You heard it here first. A skeptical. Now, <laughs> this is kind of like a side note, but before it was called a skeptical, I was going to call it what the hell, but then my yeah. sister was like, no, Beto, that's a little, no, that's a little too much. And then I figure, okay, I'm going to call it skeptical. Tell me something skeptical about the idea of food and God and, and recipes. <laughs> food and God and recipes. Okay. Um, I would say the principle, you know, when people, you know, the people that are always just only eating, um, You know, like, you know, the, have you heard the saying, like, eat to live, uh, not live to eat, or live to eat, not le eat to live? Eat to... For me, I think I've never eating heard is it. such, like, an enjoyable thing. Like, the people that don't take time to enjoy their food and, like, actually mm. savor it and enjoy it. Okay. Like, if they're just, like, cramming stuff in their mouth because they have to eat. They're just, like, eating a power bar because that's all they have time for. For me, I'm like, no. Mm. Take time to enjoy it. Like slow down. Love enjoy it. it. Like wow. see what see what's there. See what's around the table instead. Wow. What what a great invitation. I, that's amazing. You know, I think you no know, um even in an episode I did long ago, um the person was saying that he went to Africa and this woman was preparing a meal that was just amazing and they're like, Hey, what's the secret ingredient? And she said The secret ingredient is slow. Yeah. Slow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's oh, so good. Sure. Okay. Probably all those slow roasted African meats and stuff. I bet that oh, was yeah. delicious. It, I bet it was. So no, I wanna I wanna go there one day and prove it myself. So yeah. tell me something inspiring or inspired when it comes to food, recipes, and God. Okay. Uh, the first thing that came to mind is trying something new mm. because a lot of us will get stuck in the same rut or a lot of us think we don't have anything to offer in the kitchen. Like, oh, I'm not a cook or I'm not a baker. No, I just can't. I just can't. Yes, you can. I want to say, yes, you can. You can cook. You might have some belly flops and you might have some failures, but it's It's cool to try new stuff. You totally yes. can do it. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be fussy. It can it can just be whatever, whatever you know, like you're capable of at that moment in time. But nobody's great at anything from the get-go. And I think I think God's honored like when we pony up to try something new. Wow, that's so good. Even yesterday, as I was staying home and watching um, you know, church from home, the pastor was saying, you know, when you go out, for breakfast the next time is like try a different dish try something you've never tried before right mm -hmm. i think yeah. that's this idea of hey get inspired do something different love it thank you yeah. kate okay what's something holy when it comes to all these topics <sighs> oh um i would say 
Um, oh man, it feels like beating a dead horse, but welcoming people into, welcoming people to, to try whatever it is that is at your table. Like, I love the story about your salsa Valentina and like, <laughs> I love that. I think that's awesome. Like, I love, I learned something about you through that. Mm. And you learn something about me through my own personal experiences. And I think, you know, if we all shared tables a little more often, I think we'd probably have a lot more friends on this earth. Wow. Oof. That's that's holy right there. That's so yeah. good, Kate. All right. And finally, divine. Divine. Ugh. Okay, well, look, we haven't said this yet, but since you're from Guadalajara, can I just say... Pastor tacos, can that be divine? Because that is one of my very favorite foods. And oh. <laughs> I don't know if that comes from, I don't know if that comes from Guadalajara, but it's delicious. Okay. And I'm going to say it's divine. <laughs> Perfect. So tacos al pastor. I think that's what you meant, right? Yes, that's what I meant. <laughs> okay. That's what I meant. Tacos I al pastor it. are amazing. Tacos al pastor. Everybody loves tacos al pastor. That's the most so good. divine. I love it. I think ta so there's something divine about tacos. I totally agree with you. Couldn't agree more. Yes. That's so good. Yes. With some cilantro and diced onion. <laughs> Perfect. So now you're making me hungry. <laughs> so good. Look, you're coming back from COVID. Yes. Tacos. We're doing COVID. it. <laughs> during COVID, one taco at a time. Okay, Kate, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show. Where can people find more about you know, your blog, what you do, your Her Daily Bread book, and you know, yeah. you know, get it before the year starts so you can follow along this year, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the book's available everywhere. You can find it at uh, Target, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, maybe even your local bookseller. Um, and you can find more about the book and my There's tons, like hundreds of free recipes on my website. It's woodandspoon.com. So if you've got a sweet tooth, you should you should go there because lots of dessert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Kate. Thank you. Well, Thank you for having me. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you.